Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Lord, that you are here today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. Lord, I ask that you will anoint my, my mouth to speak, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you will come and bring revelation, Holy Spirit, to each of us, Lord. Revelation into the Word, Lord, and revelation in our lives from the Word. Um, mm, I ask that you will touch us mm, in a new way. Mm. Yeah, I ask that you will bring revelation as I preach your word, Lord. Um, and I just, I just want to thank you, Lord, and thank you for let it be a, such a fun walk to walk with you, Lord. I really enjoy that. God is funny. God is funny. <laughs> just, just remember that, isn't it? Just all serious stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, God is funny. I'm going to tell you some funny things today. Mm -hmm. He's funny. Uh, also, I want to say, um, remember to give to the church. Mm -hmm. Because when you give, you're being obedient to God. It's all, everything is about God. It's not about us. It's about God. Remember to give to the church. And I know on the screen, CERN is so kind to make the video so really, really good. Thank you, CERN. I really, really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. On the screen, there is an account number and mobile pay. You can donate on that number. Uh, when we give, it's the way, it's the, one of the ultimate ways for us to show that we trust the Lord. I trust you, Lord. Jesus talked more about parables in, in regards of money than he did in, in, every, in anything else because Jesus knew that mammon is an issue for us. Mm -hmm. And we need to get over that. There are many, many ways that mammon is... Uh, is, is driving our lives, is, is steering our lives, is, is you know, taking control of our lives. There are many ways that, that um, mammon can do that, and I don't want that. And personally, I'm very strict on it. And even though this ministry is very small, I take some of the money that you give, and I give it to a ministry in which I know that they are doing uh, outreach to poor people. So this is the way we do it here. And of course, we have still stuff here we need to pay for as well. But it's still a way to show God, the ultimate way to show God, I trust you. And it's also a way, how much do you, you know, is there, talking about money in church has been really, really poisoned. It's really been contaminated and we need to get over that because Money for God is the least, the least, the least of prosperity. And Satan is using money here to hold Christians down. You know, it's like it's almost popular to be a poor Christian somehow. You're, you know, you're more holy than or something, you know. There's still this attitude. We need to get over that because I want to set girls free in India. <laughs> I want to do outreach, you know, I want to do all these things, you know. Amen. And so God does things in many ways, and sometimes He blesses us. I am going to teach more on the four ways of giving, but I need you to get this. It doesn't matter, I just keep on, just moving on and on. I want you to get each of the points. So I'm going to keep on talking about tithing until I really sense you get it and until and that's when the Lord tells me now you can move on you know I'm doing what the Lord tells me to do because he wants you to get it because then you are free okay you have to you have to, and then when you are free you know you can do what he wants to do and then everything all the glory goes back to him so we have to keep talking about these things in order to see that everything we do 
is has to do with honoring God. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Everything we do has to point back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I like to oh I say always say it like that. It has to point back to him. I give this money and I sow here so that this can grow. We all want a nice local church, right? Well, how do you think it's going to grow? You know, it doesn't just pop out of heaven. Boop. <laughs> you know, you're participating in on that. Mm -hmm. So in your local church, you sow in your local church. And when you come here, this is your local church, you know. And we need to get that. We need to get those things. Um, Denmark needs to be free, <laughs> you know. Denmark needs to know the Lord. Denmark needs a sweep of the Lord, you know, where, you know, he can touch our nation and, and many other nations. Anyways, but thank you for donating, those of you who are. Thank you for donating. Um, and something happens, when you give money, something happened in the spiritual realm. I'm just going to address that. In Malachi 3, 8, it talks about that God is uh, rebuking the devourer when we give our tenth. It's protection money. <laughs> so we need to, and there's also the, the link into when we give, we, we link into the church spiritually as well. The different layers of different things are going on in that. So we need to understand these things. Personally, when I sow, I'm very aware of where I sow. I am. I always ask God. I always follow His directions, and um, I, I, the minute I sow, I sense it spiritually. I can feel it in my spirit. It's just, I just link up with that ministry. I just feel it. So we have to be, you know. There are many things that goes on, and, and we can't do it in, in, on our own. One church can't save the world, mm -hmm. but one church in many churches mm -hmm. can save the world. Mm -hmm. All right? That's why the church needs to unite, and that's why Satan is always out to divide. Because Satan knows of this principle. He wants to split the churches apart. Mm -hmm. Our church is much better than their church, you know, stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Stop talking like that, you know, just, it's not about that, you know. It's about churching, moving in on together. Mm -hmm. So, there are many layers in, in, in sowing and donating and giving money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's just wonderful when the Lord blesses us, because He does. He does. But we have to do it His way. If something's not working and you're doing everything, you know, we have to log in on why is it not working? Well, we have to do it His way. Sometimes it could just be one area and this whole money thing is, it's such an area that is so contaminated, you know, we have to... And the flesh is really in on Oh, but it's hard, you know. No, it's not. We have to get over that. It's training. I'm going to talk a lot about training today, exercising in the gym. <laughs> because that's what we do. Today's, I'm going to talk about prayers today. I'm going to talk about, uh, I've called this one, reverse curses into prayers. Um... And um, how can I put this? We need, to, we need to learn to walk in, to live in. How do I encourage myself? When I'm down, and, uh, and things are just, you know, really hard. Because they, they will, you know, it, times comes when it's really hard. We need to learn how to encourage ourselves. I'm go I've taken out, well, the Lord has actually, uh, taken out scriptures from the Old Testament because we're like, oh, but the Old Testament is not really for us today. Well, it is. Because you're going to recognize some of the 
curses that were in the Old Testament. And there we can see that um, we need the Lord. <laughs> we need Jesus. Uh, I've reversed the text. Well, the Lord has asked me to do it like this. Reverse the text. If we don't, the Bible here talks about in Deuteronomy, the Bible talks about certain things will happen if you don't follow the commandments of the Lord. We all know what it's like to live without the Lord. So you're going to recognize some of the ones I've, I'm going to read out for you. And then I'm going to read out for you uh, which scriptures to use in those areas. But first, um, first there were the curses that Moses read out for the people. And then he, he read, if you, dil if you listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord, of your, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And then he reads out all the blessings. I'm going to end with that one. I'm going to start out with the curses. Uh, curse, cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the field. What does that mean for us today? For us that means nothing I do seems to really work. Why is that? Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Cursed shall be whatever you hold your food in. Your, your food won't uh, stretch. You won't have enough food. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body, your children. This is serious. Of your land, of increase of your cattle and the young of your sheep. I don't have cattle or sheep. No, but you have a job, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's like as if there's no really breakthrough in the job, you know, and everything we do doesn't really come out right and all these things. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. Have you ever felt like you never belong anywhere? Oh, I always feel so weird when I come in here. I also feel so weird when I go out here. I never feel I belong here. <laughs> things like that. Thoughts like that. I'm translating into our thinking today. The Lord shall send you curses, confusion. Have you ever been confused? <laughs> what do you want me to know? Maybe I should do this. No, I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe what's it you, Lord? I don't know. And you use days of just walking around, even living in confusion. And rebuke in every enterprise to which you set your hand. Oh, I have a great idea. That's a great idea. You know, I can do this and this and this. God will rebuke it. You won't prosper in it. Until you are destroyed, perished quickly because of the evil of your doings by which you have forsaken me. Moses and God as one. Uh, and then at some point we just give up. Oh, it's no good. I'm not, you know, I had this great idea, but I, I forget it, you know, and people steal it. I remember one time, I get many ideas. I remember one time I had this great idea for baby cups. <laughs> and I thought, you know, when you're, when you have a baby, you know, you, you, you want to bring hot soup with, you know, as a mother, you know, and then you could do the thermo, you got to just, you know, got to invent these things, you know. And I talked to the, to the woman, to the nurse who came to see my daughter, and she said, no, no, that would never work. Satan stole it. You know what? I never did something about it. He stole it. One year later, I saw it in the shop. <laughs> Thermos baby cups. Hmm. You know, Satan is out there to steal. Just one example from my own life. The Lord will make the... Pestilence cling to, uh, to you until he has consumed you from the land into which you go to possess. 
we won't get the, we won't get what belongs to us. The Lord will smite you with consumption, with fever, inflammation, fiery heat, sword, drought, blasting, and mildew. Nothing will grow. Nothing will come up. Nothing will flourish. They shall pursue you until you perish. Have you ever been you constantly where you just, I'm just being consumed in this. I'm just being consumed in these emotions. I'm being consumed in this area in my life. I'm being consumed in this. I don't understand what is this going on. I don't understand, Lord. The heavens over your head shall be brass. Nothing, no blessings. It's hard. Have you ever felt like you hit a wall? Doom, and you constantly hit a wall in some area? That's a closed heaven. And the earth under you shall be iron. No life. Hard. Ground. Nothing. You can grow nothing in it. You know, you can't grow anything in iron. You know. The Lord shall make the rain of your land um, pounded soil, dust from the heavens. It shall come down upon you until you are destroyed. <laughs> no, nothing that will, we sow will prosper. We need rain, good solid rain for the for the uh, for the mark for the land for the plants to grow if that doesn't come just dust just dry dust nothing can grow we saw that here this summer mm -hmm. there are many farmers that needed to close down their um, uh, farming went out of business many cattle needed to be slaughtered and we think, oh, it's just the Bible, you know, it's just in the old days. No, it's not in just in the old days, you know, it's alive. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall cause you to be struck down before your enemies. We're like, Lord, why is these unrighteous people blooming, flourishing, and I'm doing the right thing? You shall go out one way against them, and you try to go out, and you try to, you know, and flee seven ways before them. You can't come through. We can't come through. And you shall be tossed to and fro, and be a terror among the, all the kingdoms of the earth. Nobody wants have to have anything to do with you. <laughs> Why am I, you know, I don't understand these things. And we walk around alone, you know. Mm -hmm. And these things goes back in generations in our family. Just a side mark. And your dead body shall be f food for all the birds of the air and beasts of the earth, and there shall be no one to frighten them away. We're nothing. We become to nothing. Nobody cares. We're just a dead body out there in the desert. <laughs> the Lord will smite you with the boils of Egypt and the tumors, the scurvy and the itch from which you cannot be healed. These are all curses. Do we know people who have some of these things? Yeah. I can think of some. <laughs> Have you, there are people with boils today, you know, sores, boils, all kind of stuff. The Lord will smite you. I saw a man, he lost his limbs. He had a disease where he just lost his limbs. This day and age. And I'm not talking India or Africa. The Lord will smite you with madness. Have you ever felt like you were going mad? I have. <laughs> Blindness. And, you know, not in that sense being blind. But, you know, you can't find direction. You know, like, when I, and, and you walk around and you, should I do this? Maybe I said, I don't know what to do. 
Is this the right decision? I don't know. And you, and you just walk around in circles in your life. And 10 years later, you're still, I'm, I'm, well, nothing happened. I'm still in the same spot as I was 10 years ago. <laughs> dismay of mind and heart. Oh, oh dismay. Oh, have you ever met people who's like this all the time? Oh, it's so hard. You know, this is so hard. And so, that's dismay of heart and mind. And you can't help it feeling like that. That's my whole point in reading this. And we want to get out of it. We don't want to feel like this. But you're like, and I try, and you know, I'm happy, you know, I'm straightening my back up and just one minute. You don't have the strength for it. We need God. And you shall grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness. <laughs> You can't find your way. And you shall not prosper in your ways. And you shall be only oppressed, robbed continually. Have you ever had so many bills and you keep paying them and keep paying them? It's just still so many bills. That's robbed continually. Robbed emotionally. I was just feeling happy, now I'm down again. I was just so happy, now I'm down again. And you have this emotional... This is especially women, I would say, emotional person going up and, oh, and then you're, oh, no, and you're like, you know, you're like a freak, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And you think, what's happening to me? Am I going schizophrenic or what? No, you're just not under God's protection of sanity. One of the fruits of the Spirit is a sound mind. I love that, sound mind. We get a sound mind. Should I do this or that? Don't do that. Okay, fine. And you start doing automatically things that are not sound for you. And you shall be trod a wife, but another man will lie with her. In those days, a wife didn't have much saying, so that's why they're using this analogy. You shall marry a wife, but another man will sleep with her. That's annoying when you're married. You know, it's like, what's going on in that? And you can't just, you know, in that sense, it's never good for us to get a, a divorce. It's never healthy. Uh, spiritual, I would say it's one of the worst things you can do as a human being. Once you've been married and get a divorce, spiritually, it's don't do it if you can avoid it. I mean, really, don't do it, you know. It's one of the greatest blessings God gave us as humans, and that was the marriage between man and wife. It's, it's, it's very precious to Him, and it's very, it should be very precious to us. And when we are filled with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, it automatically becomes precious. And, and only with God we can go through the motions, difficult motions that a marriage uh, will bring. So this is very frustrating. You shall build a house, but not live in it. Oh, I bought this great house, but I don't have uh, money to live in it. I lost all my money. <laughs> oh. You shall plant a vineyard, but not gather its grapes. Oh, I did all this work and somebody else gets the, the benefit. Hmm. Hmm. Happened again. No, it happened again. <laughs> And you, your ox shall be slain before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. They've taken animals at that time was, you know, that's prosperity. And that's why they're talking about it like that. So your ox, that which you made you prosper, will be slain, but you won't eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away before your face. A donkey at that time was the most expensive animal. And not be restored to you. You won't get it back. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies and you shall have no one to help you. You're all alone. I'm all alone. Nobody's helping. I'm all alone. I've experienced many of these things. Mm. 
when I grew up, I didn't have protection. It's a miracle I'm here today, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I didn't know I was going to share this, but I just felt the spirit on it. And have no one to help you. That's been really one of my biggies. No one to help me. No one. It's a miracle I'm here. I really wanted to die. I really wanted to die. So what's the point of being here when you experience all of these things? Many people live like this. If you have family, honor your family. You know, ask God if they're difficult mem family members, ask God how to handle it. Family is precious. It's precious. I have no family. I have my daughter and I have good friends. I have family in other countries, but I'm not close with them. I experienced many of these things. Every time I did something, it didn't succeed. Like I told you, I'm making fun of it, but I actually experienced it many, many times. In many directions and areas. And I was wondering what's going on, Lord. You know, what's going on? I couldn't understand it. It wasn't until I met Jesus and really met him. You know, you can know about Jesus and then you can know him. I know Jesus mm -hmm. and I want you to know him mm -hmm. because otherwise we can't come through with these things. We can't. I'm very happy today. Mm -hmm. I still in many battles, you can say, but it's very different. Mm -hmm. And I know I will come through because I have Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Amen. When I was 34, my brother hanged himself. When I was 22, my mother became sick and I had no one. My parents got divorced when I was six. My mother didn't like me in particular. That's a mild way to put it. I've tried many things. I know what I'm talking about, do things there. You better listen to me, because I know. <laughs> That's why God picked me, I think. It's a miracle I'm here. And when I was 22, I sat down on my knees and I said, God, if there is a God, I want you to, you know, you got to talk to me. Otherwise, I don't want to be here. 22, peak of your life. You should be out there having fun, you know, doing stuff. And then I saw Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw him with my eyes. It just changes things when you see him. And then he said to me, from now on everything will be, uh, now everything will be fine. And I was like, oh, wonderful Jesus, thank you. That's not what he meant. What he meant was, from now on, I'm with you. See, we got to learn, but I had no one. Atheist family, you know, I had no one. So, it took me a decade or more than a decade until I realized there is only Jesus. I went all through the different valleys of other gods. <laughs> I've tried everything. And then God started, and, and quite early on, he started showing, I'm very blessed in seeing spiritual stuff. God has really blessed me in that area. I've always had like that. But when you see his glory, you also see uh, the other side of it. That can be very hard sometimes. But uh, I went through that, and then I, God started talking to me about, don't do this, stop doing that, da, 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 da. and I just did. I obeyed. 
I obeyed him. You know, it's like, okay, I won't do that. You know, I'll, I'll do this. You saying this, I do this. You know, I didn't understand, but I obeyed. It's very important that we obey. We won't understand, and it's just after we we obey that he will tell us or show us why, or we will know why. But it's only after. So many of these things I know. Many, 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 many. Your sons and daughters shall be given to another people. What does that look like, look like today? Your sons and daughters will start doing drugs. Ooh, that's the parents' worst nightmare. Oh. And your eyes shall look. You will see and fail with longing for them all day. When your kids are on drugs, you can't reach them. You know, it's like, because the drugs is running them. That's our issue today. And there shall be no one, no power in your hands to prevent it. That's how parents feel, right? Powerless. A nation which you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your land. We see that also in nations. Uh, some nations, I would say the Western world is taking advantage of the, of the, for instance, India. And, you know, they're using all the people there for all the clothing and the coloring and stuff like that, you know. And we just buy more and more and more and more. We need, we need got to have like 500 shirts of whatever, you know. While the, the mother with her baby in India sitting in the factory, sewing 10 hours, unable to be with her baby, and she get what? Nothing, you know. These are all these things. Uh, one nation taking advantage of another nation, and we know in India there is a lot of idolatry. A lot. I know I've been to India. I've done all, I've done all the guru stuff, so I know. I know the whole shebang. So that's one way. <clears throat> so that you'll be <clears throat> driven mad by the sights which your eyes shall see. It drives parents mad to see your children, to see your nation going berserk. We have some crazy stuff here. It's different here, but we have crazy, you know, the whole world is very, it's very different. Just like, if you just go back 20 years, things we see today, I mean, Stuff people write on Facebook? Are you kidding me? It's outrageous. And the things that goes on behind the closed doors, I, I'm not going to go into any of that. A lot of stuff. The Lord will smite you on the knees and on the legs with sore boils that cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. What does that mean for us? It means we can't move. Have you seen some of the diseases that are in India? Boils, physically boils coming out of people's bodies. This, today. <laughs> the Bible is alive. But for us, it would mean, because we have all these vaccines as well here in, in the Western world, but for us, it would mean spiritually boils that makes you unable to move. This is the church. The Lord gave me a prophecy last year, I think it was, and he said the church has boils on her legs and is fat, and she, she thinks she is a ballerina, but she's fat and full of boils. Just <laughs> sick. It's sick, you know. The Lord shall bring you and your king, whom you have set over you to a nation, which neither you nor your fathers have known, and there you shall be forced to serve other gods. This is something we see today. Taking our leaders of our, of our nation and, and put them under, under other leaders. I won't go into any of the details on that one, but we see it. And those leaders in other nations are running the 
for instance, our nations, you know, we have some agreements in the European Parliament and you think like, what has that got to do with Denmark? Some people in France making decisions for us here in Denmark, different things like that. We can relate, right? Uh, and you shall become an amazement, a proverb, and a byword among all the people which the Lord will lead you. You shall carry much seed out into the field and shall gather little in, for the locusts shall consume it. We won't prosper. <laughs> you shall plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink the vine nor gather the grapes, for the uh, worm has eaten them. Another way of not prospering. You shall have all it, and these are all precious things to God. Pre this was the most prominent and precious things to the people back then. Uh, vineyards and, uh, and, and sowing. If, if you don't, sow, if, we, if we can't sow, we can't get brew, food, we can't get bread, we can't, you know, different, we can still relate. And you shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olive trees shall drop their fruit. That's bad. <laughs> oh, no anointing without anointing. Hmm? We see people living without anointing. Especially when we, when we become Christian, we, you know, we get discernment. You know, it's like, yeah, I know, I, I know, I get it why you're living like that. I get your problem. You need Jesus, you know, because we need the anointing. There is an anointing. And when you can't anoint, back then they anointed with oil. We don't need to do that today. Thank you, Jesus. But back then they did it with oil. You shall beget sons and daughters, but shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Ooh, yeah. You will get children, but they will be captives. And back then they will, you, you would lose your children uh, into be serving other families, slavery, you know, slavery, still have that. All your trees and the fruit of your ground shall be locusts possess. That's not bad. Uh, that's really bad, you know. The transient stranger among you shall mount up higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. We will always feel that we are below, always low. We try to climb up, but there is always someone higher pushing us down, pushing us out to the side, you know, and we always feel that we are at the bottom. All the curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you do not obey the voice of the Lord uh, your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he has commanded you. They shall be a, uh, they shall be upon you a sign for warning of other nations and for a wonder and upon you descendants forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and heart in gratitude for the abundance of all which he had blessed you. I think we get, there are more, but I think we get the picture, right? Um, and we look today, they shall be upon you a sign of warning to other nations. We look to some nations and we wonder, right? How on earth did that happen? Just look at Africa. It's really bad. Really bad. Really bad. I mean, or Yemen. Have you seen Yemen right now? Children starving to death. Millions. Do we hear anything about that in the news? No, nah, not really. And we think, oh, the, the Old Testament, that's just way back then. Not in my world. I, I, if you look around in the world, we see it. And we have an obligation as Christians. 
We can't sit around just, you know, oh, just me and God, small me and Jesus here in my sofa. We can't do that. We can't afford that, you know. There are things that need to be done. And we need to be dressed up in the full armor of God in order to to go out and do something. Isn't it interesting back in, um, I was just thinking about all the things that we experience here in Denmark in regards to, uh, well, many nations actually, all the European countries experiencing in regards to uh, Islam. That happened in the Bible too. What happened to the Christians? They got out of their homes. They start, you know, walking and living for God, you know. You think it's a sign? <laughs> yes. Come on, you know, we need to, we need to, the, the, people who are Muslims, they have very strong, they're very strong in their religion. And they're not afraid of saying it. Are you a Muslim? Yeah, I'm a Muslim, you know. They're proud of it, you know. If you ask a Christian, are you a Christian? Yeah, but don't tell anyone, you know. It's so, you know, turn the other cheek kind of. Jesus is no wimp. Jesus wasn't a wimp. He wasn't. Turn the other cheek. You know, Christians are like, oh, it's just, you know, you can beat me whenever you want. You know, it's fine. You know, Jesus wasn't like that. We have to understand these things. They ask him, in what authority do you, Luke 24? Yeah, let's read it. It's kind of fun. I like that. I like that. Jesus, no wimp. I sang it to him this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for not being a wimp <laughs> in my prayer. I heard him laugh. Ha, ha, ha. I love it. Ah. He's no wimp. You know why I appreciate it? Because then I don't have to be a wimp. Right? And this women stuff. Oh, I have all these soft voices. All women have soft voices. What's with that? Do you talk like that by yourself? No. But I'm around certain people, I do. You know. <laughs> I like this one. Where is it? There it is. One day, as Jesus was instructing the people in the temple, porches, and preaching the good news, the gospel, the thief, uh, chief thief, he was a thief. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's kind of funny. The chief priest and the scribes came, I mean, the highest of the highest people, the most important people came up with the elders, members of the Sanhedrin, the most important people, you know, they're so important they can hardly talk, and said to him, tell us by what sort of authority are you doing these things? Or is it, or who is it who gave you this authority? And he, and he replied to them, I will also ask you a question. Now answer me. Was the baptism of John uh, from heaven or from men? And they argued and discussed it and reasoned together with themselves, saying, if we, if we reply from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? But if we answer from men, all the people will stone us to death, for they are long, for they are long since firmly convinced that John was a prophet, which he was. So they replied that they did not know from where it came. Then Jesus said to them, I love this, neither will I tell you, by what authority I do this? <laughs> Jesus was not a wimp. No. He wasn't. No. We have to stop this. Oh, I just, they treat me so bad, but it's fine, you know. It's not fine, you're aggravating in time. You're just, oh. You know, Jesus wasn't a wimp. <sighs> we have to get these things. So how do we act, you know? Jesus using wisdom here. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus knows everything. We go to God, okay, God, how do I do this? I'm so frustrated with this. And he says, do this and this and this. Okay, fine. That's it. And he will. You've done this many times to me. Stop seeing that person. Don't do that. My daughter had a writing instructor. Instructor. I actually thought she was really nice, you know. Nice and sweet. And he said, no. Oh, what do you mean? No, not good. Don't, you know. And then he removed her. She got a new one. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't ask him. I, he just showed me her heart wasn't right. We need God. To me, she looked fine. <laughs> and then he said, that person. And I'm like, that person? <laughs> Are you sure, God? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then you have to go, I mean, sure you want me to, you know, pray for that person? Yes. Bring that person here. Okay, God. They just need a lot of, you know, a diamond. If you have a rough diamond, it needs, it needs to be molded in order for it to shine. Mm. God will put us with people where we are the ones to help them to mold them to shine, right? Mm -hmm. And we can't look at the outer appearance. No. I've learned that. Hands off. None of my business. Anyway. Now, here comes all the blessings. <laughs> it's pretty heavy, right? All oh, these curses. <laughs> and you get so tired. Oh, no, no, no. When is all the fun coming, Lord? Even the preaching is hard, Lord. You know, why is there no one? <laughs> okay. Let's lift it a little bit here. But in, I, we need the seriousness of it. Mm. we got to understand. This, mm. this is Old Testament, but it's still happening today. Mm. Yeah. I wrote here, caution. Be aware of, don't let your emotion dictate your prayers. Mm. I'm so down, you don't love me anymore, God. He loves you. Just the same. I'm so high. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. And then you have to pray the next day and you, you know, it's not the same. You don't love me the same. Don't get emotional like that. That's not from God. God, when we have emotions, but we need to, the training, the whole training is to let the emotion in the soul to align up with the spirit. Mm. It takes Training. Now I'm going to the gym with you. <laughs> a muscle only grow when it's used. Mm. Right? Mm. Um. If I want to run a marathon, it's no good. I just do it, go to the gym three times and then go run a marathon. What will happen? I will die! <laughs> Oh, if they, <laughs> I would, you know, that's no good. I have to train, I have to train, I have to train, right? It's mm. the same with prayer. Mm. Why is it not working? Well, it is. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I will show you scriptures that you can pray about. Mm. The soul is a muscle that needs to grow in workout. What do I mean by that? Body, uh, body, soul, and mind. This is who we are without Christ. When we get Christ, we have body, soul, and spirit. And we need the soul, which are the emotions, to align up with the spirit. Mm -hmm. That takes training. Because the emotions are relating to the old life constantly. Constant re relating to the old life. When this happened, when these things ha occurred in my life, this would usually happen. Therefore, when, when certain things happen in our lives that the outcome wasn't good, we need to right then start proclaiming the word of God over it. Mm. 
We need scripture. My people perish because they lack understanding. Right? We need to, we need to get understanding. We need to know the word. So I take the scripture and I keep proclaiming it over the situation, over the situation. The other day I had, I had major, I mean major attack. And then God said to me, I care for you deeply. And I could sense the depth of his love for me. And I was like, actually first today I was just like, why did you actually say that, you know? In my, I had major attack, you know, and then he, he showed me because if you know the depth of my love for you, you know I'm in control. Mm. We gotta know how much he loves us. Because the enemy is, is always trying to steal that, you know. Mm. You're alone, you know, all these thinking. It won't come, it won't happen, you know. Especially, I would say the first three years as a Christian, there's a lot of that. It will never happen, you know. Why on earth do you think that, you know, this would happen to you? Ha! That's Satan talking. Mm -hmm. And we need to go against it. Yeah. Happy up, these are emotions. Happy up, God loves me. Uh, down, sad, God don't love me. That's emotional talk. It's not biblical, it's not right, get rid of it. Just no matter how you feel, God loves me. God loves me, he is in control. God loves me, and I'm doing what you, you we gotta learn how to speak to ourselves. David was really good at that. You know, sometimes they, be quiet so. Be quiet, so. Sometimes the soul is like a wild dog, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then you're like, what's going on with you? You know, it's like, <laughs> it's all over, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, sit down, be quiet. We have to talk like that. And then it's just, ah, oh, peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just, when we're sad, just shh. We gotta learn how to comfort ourselves. Shh. In the spirit. Shh. Everything's God is in control. Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Shh. Be gentle. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to be able to run a marathon, I have to train. These are the training. No scripture. The enemy, enemy always attack when you're alone, when you're out, <laughs> at night, when you, th when you think, now I can just relax and let down all my guards. Uh, sorry, we can never do that as Christians. What does that mean? It means that we always have to be spiritually prepared. It's not like I can't go home and just, you know, hang on at my couch and just open the gates for everything. Can't do that. We have to listen. It takes training what I'm talking about here. I'm just showing you what to do in those areas. The full armor of God is, is something we need to be dressed in and we need to know the, uh, the purpose of the full armor. Mm -hmm. And we need, to, we need to, in order to wear an armor, you need to have physical strength, right? Mm -hmm. So we gotta get mental, spiritual strength to carry the full armor. What does that mean? I have the full armor. Shield of faith. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, we gotta have, we gotta lift the shield when the enemy comes. All good things come to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We gotta lift the shield. Mm -hmm. When God, when the enemy comes says, nothing good is ever gonna happen. What you're doing right now, it won't, you know, it won't work out. Just forget it. 
you know, he's like that. That's even too long to listen to him. I sense in my spirit, he's in the room. I just shabbat, abad, abad. I just go into war prayer because he does that. How do I sense it? It turns cold. How do I sense God? I feel this rip physically. I feel a river coming up. When I'm preaching, I'm, now I'm sharing something with you. When I'm preaching, I feel the fountain of the living water coming up like this, up and out of my mouth. Amen. That's preaching. If I look in the spiritual, I see the water come out. Amen. Right? When Satan is in the room, I'm saying, you are out, man. This is my territory. We got to talk like that. Can you hear Christianity is not, oh, it's a small, smiley way of the Christians. No, 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 no. We got to talk to him. We got to say, this is my area. You're out. <laughs> You're in my living room. I didn't invite you. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> we got to talk like that. Yeah, can you have, we have a voice. Why do you think God gave us a voice? To rebuke and to talk to him. And when there's unity in the language, <laughs> whoo, you know, stuff happens. God came down when they tried to build Babylon as a tower into heaven. God came down. He said, let's go down. Who went down? The Trinity. They went down and he scattered the people because the people, the enemy knows of this tactic. If there is unity in the area of speaking, there is a force working. <laughs> When there's a unity in, in, this, in the church, there is God's force working. We got to stay together, come apart all these differences. Oh, I don't like her, but she's always, you know, talking too much. Yeah, but maybe you're just too quiet, you know. Then maybe you should talk some more, you know. Get over yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? Yeah. We got to get this unity in church. And Satan knows of this. That's why there's so much division in church. I have three education. I've never seen so much division as in church. <laughs> never. <laughs> you know. He knows this. But we gotta talk like that. Can you feel the spirit? You just, yeah, man, bring it on. You know, you just wanna <laughs> go to war. You know, yeah, come on. <clears throat> you know. That's how we should feel inside. Now I'm just letting it all hang out. Normally, I'm a very nice person. <laughs> you get my point, right? Mm -hmm. One grow in endurance. It takes endurance, everything I'm talking about. It takes endurance, and one grow in endurance in prayer uh, only by doing it. If I work out, my muscle only grows when I keep doing it. If I don't, if I only do it once a week, it will hardly ever grow, will it? You know. I like that. I like that picture with the gym. And then we also got to go to the gym when we don't feel like it. Amen. Hallelujah. The flesh don't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it, you know. It takes, it takes that training just to do it, just do it. You know, you put on your training clothes and then you go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And the flesh might be like, oh, I just want to be home. And you say, shh, Saul, be quiet. I'm not listening to you. I'm going into my prayer house and I'm praying. Mm -hmm. It's the same picture. It's the same, actually it's the same you have to do if we need to work out. And the body starts with all this complaining. Oh, but it's cold and it's this and then you just shab bip up, shab it up, bop 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 bop. <laughs> bop, 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 And you go. It's the same in prayer. And there will come a point where we just do it 
and the flesh is in alignment with the spirit mm, hallelujah. and you just do it mm. and then comes great prayer life I can't really share that with you because you still need to learn to do this <laughs> mm. but great prayer life this just hanging out with Jesus hours on man it's great it's wonderful what have we got? First we got uh, overcomers. We're overcomers. Amen. We're overcomers. I say to God, I want to overcome this. This major brain attack I had. I was like, Arr! that's how I felt in time. Whole day. I had like just shooting at me. I said, I want to be this overcomer for you, God. And I just prayed in tongues and I you know. And it was major fear attack he tried with me major major I was like it just and it just always comes out of the blue this night last night in the night I had the same thing I'm preaching with you with brain attack so we're overcomers right we can overcome use the words of the Bible I want to overcome. Help me, God, to overcome. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. Now, when we do what God tells us to do, how? Uh, not that one. <laughs> What is our commandment to God? And our, maybe I should read it. And our, I just want to say in prayer, prayer is not about give me, 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 give me. I am going to repeat that, but it's about Lord, help me to hear you. Help me to know what you want me to do because it's about where I am in eternity. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am going to talk a lot more about eternity because we're in these times where we got to know in eternity. I figured this out, this after death thing. And I'm just, I assume we, got, we got a job to do, people. Yeah. The first death is not being saved here on earth. That's the first death. The second death, the first death, if you die unsaved, the second death is that you will come up in heaven <laughs> at the judgment day <laughs> and you will be judged. The worst, the, the, the death, the lake of fire in that sense is the, the outmost separation from God. We got to understand these things. That's why we pray. Help me, Lord. Let me know what you want me to do. You know. Amen. There is a judgment. There will come a judgment. And we will be judged on everything we do. And to me, being separated from Jesus and those people who are separated, they know that they are separated from Jesus. That's pretty scary stuff. I want, I want all people I know, you know, come on, come in the club, man, you know, let's, you know, come in the party, you know. What is the lake of fire? Agony. It's deep agony, gnashing of teeth. In eternity. I think that's pretty scary stuff. If you know people who are not saved, we need to be on fire for God. Can you hear that? Amen. There's a lot of young people, you know that, a lot of young people, they don't know from heads to tail, from one thing to another. Mm. Just, they don't know anything. Just social media, whatever stuff going on, you know that too, you know. They don't know anything. They're just lost. They just want to die when they're 20. I don't want to live anymore. 
we have a job to do. We need to be on fire for God so that we can, with a, you know, with a straight bag go out. You say, you got to know Jesus, you know, come on in. Something happens when we know Jesus. Say, yeah, I want to know Jesus. Okay, say with me. Lord, I take you as my Savior. <laughs> you know, we've got to learn how to do that. We got, it's easy. Once you're filled with the Spirit, no problem. You do it. That's the purpose of prayer. <laughs> and God will provide all of our needs while we do all the other things. <laughs> That's why I'm so quiet in these days. I need to search God out. What do you want me to do, Lord? I've lost interest in so many things in the world. Couldn't really care less about things in the world. Doesn't matter to me. I've been to heaven. Woo! I can't wait to get there. Anyway, this is what I wanted to read to you. And then a certain lawyer arose to try and test him, Jesus, saying, Teacher, what am I to do to inherit everlasting life? That is, to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. God has a great life for us. When you study eschatology, this is the commandment. Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he replied, you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul. We've got to get the soul in the alignment. The heart and the alignment. And with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. This is the commandment. And because I read that because now you're going to see this. Watch fully and do all his commandments. Today we only have in that sense one commandment. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but we got to give everything to him. And when we give everything to him, all the commandments in the Old Testament is fulfilled. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. They have six, 613 commandments. Have you been to Israel and see how, how they run around and do all the things they shouldn't do? And do all of their... Oh, it's hard work, man. And they walk around with these strips on their arms and the cask and, and that's just, you know, it's... Oh. I get tired just looking at them. But with Jesus, we have this one commandment. This one commandment. And in that one commandment, the rest is fulfilled. How beautiful is that? So that's the commandment. Love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the commandment. This is what we do. And then God said, the blessings are, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. My daughter's life will be blessed. None of you have children, but it's so wonderful when God, you know. I'm going to share that. My, my daughter went to school, and, uh, and she changed. God said, you, you got to move her. She wasn't work, it wasn't working for her. So I changed schools, and and the old um, <laughs> it's so funny. The old uh, principal in the old school, she tried to bribe me to get my daughter to stay. I was like, wow, interesting. And then I just knew this is the right thing. And so she changed school this summer, and just. You had August, September, October, three months, almost four, where it's just, I was like praying for her, you know. How's the friends doing? Because the issue, the other, the other place was a group of, she was in a group of, with girls, and they, you know, all these stuff going on, so they with Gucci and all that, you know. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. And my daughter, she's this person, she just loves everyone, you know. She just wants everyone to feel good. And I'm like, you can't do that, honey. You know, you just gotta relax a little bit with that. But it's a gift in her. Mm -hmm. But she was struggling with it because some of the girls were left out. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, she was the one suffering from that. Um, in her being the one trying, you know, she had this role all of a sudden, trying to 
group the girls together. Anyway, we changed and, and um, three months in the new school year and she wasn't, you know, I was like, oh, she it was really, it was just really no good still. And I was like, Lord, is it really the good thing? And he's just, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. She's going to have me friend. Now, whew, going great. We got to do what the Lord says. Mm. Amen. Great school, great teachers, you know. They do all the homework in the school. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Because the way they do math today, you know, I got to study to keep up, you know, it's so different. Uh, I'm like, I never learned that. How do you do that? Oh, you do this and this and this and that. Okay, fine. You know. God is good, man. He's so good. But we got to do what he says. And in order for me to hear him, uh, I got to the commandment. Love your God with all your heart. I got to do what he's telling me to do. I got to give my life to him. That's why I give everything, my money, my house. I know everything belongs to God. None of it is mine. That's why I don't have an issue with ministers having plane and all of that. I don't care. Have 10. It's fine with me. Some people get really crazy about that stuff. I don't. I'm, you know, for me, Christians should be the richest people on earth. Anyway. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your breasts, the increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. Who blessed that work, blessed in our family, blessed in things we have. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading thou. Blessed shall be our refrigerator. <laughs> mm -hmm. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Oh, blessed when you come in. Oh, how wonderful to see you, you know. How great to, ah, oh, it's just something really, it's, it's there's something about you when you're here, you know. Just really enjoy your presence. That's nice, isn't it? And when you leave, you're still blessed. Oh, bye, see ya. People wish you well, you know. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. Ooh, I like that one. He does that. You will see people who came against you. And just, um, I'm, I'm sorry I said those things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I'm God's daughter. We gotta know who we are. <laughs> I'm his favorite. I mean, so are you, but I, I know I'm his favorite. There's a difference. We gotta know. They shall come out against you in one way and flee before you seven ways. Oh, I'm just gonna know. No. I can feel when people are cursing me in, in thinking and thoughts bad you know I feel it I just start rebuking it Lord send it back you know just you know that's why we have to be careful how we talk mm -hmm. the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse and all in all that you undertake and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you in your storehouse, in our house, everything we have at home. We have enough food, we have plenty of food to invite people over to food, to give food, to give what we have. That's abundance. Mm. And will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. I have inherited a piece of land in Bulgaria. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I was like, wow, that's interesting. God is the same. He's the same. And that was that year, the 50 years of release, you know, covenant. I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, the Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself. We are holy people. We are separate people. We belong to him. 
Mm -hmm. I don't belong to my feelings. I belong to him. Amen. As he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. We have to walk like Jesus. That's why we read the Bible. What did Jesus do? <laughs> And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. That's called respect. Mm. <laughs> they, you know, they, you know. But you feel if people have respect for you. Mm. You just walk in the room, just... Or people on the street. I have people on the street like that. They don't know me. This... <laughs> they do like this. <laughs> Hello, hello, <laughs> how are you? Just almost, you know, and they don't even know what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. It's the Lord. It's His presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that, doesn't it sound great? Yeah. Just walk yeah. like that. And people are so kind, you know. Do you want me to help you with that, you know? Can I, can I lift that for you, you know? Just, you know, these things, you know. Let me hold the door for you. <laughs> I like that. And all the people are... And the Lord shall make you a surplus of prosperity through the fruits of your body. Uh, there could be many children. A surplus of prosperity. Prosperity is many things. Spiritual prosperity. Uh, you know, prosperity in relations. There are many things. Remember, financial prosperity is the least in God's. It's the least. Prosperity is also in position. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're, I mean, some of the greatest ministers in the States, they're the ones ministering to the presidents. That's also prosperity, mm -hmm. right? So it could be many things. Through the fruits of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground. In the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to them. Everything God swore to give to Abraham. You know, we have the blessing of Abraham. Do you know that? Wow. you got to read the blessing of Abraham. Go home and read it. It's marvelous. He had many children. He was very rich in every way, everything he touched, you know. Honored man, respected man, you know. The Lord shall open to you his good treasuries, the heavens, no more closed heavens. Amen. Open heavens. Amen, hallelujah. It's gonna be fine, okay? It's going to be fine. Mm. Everything is going to be fine. God is with you. Everything is going to be fine. Just relax. You're doing great. Okay? You're doing great. Mm. You're doing wonderful. He's very pleased with you. Just relax. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall open to you the good treasuries, the heavens, no more brass heaven. Anyway, the heaven was open when Jesus came, right? And he rose up. The heaven been open for two thousands of years. To give the rain of your land in its season and to bless the work of your hands. 
and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Some nations are very rich. Israel is very, I mean, they're very prosperous in many ways. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Thank you. You will be above only. <laughs> and you shall be above only and you shall not be beneath. There's something about rising up over circumstances that was so hard, you know. There's something about it. And you just feel God on it. And you just know it's God. You just rise up. And when things try to pull you down, you can use these scriptures. I am the head, I'm not the tail. And you can walk in difficult circumstances that would seem undignified. You just keep proclaiming it. I am the head, not the tail. And God will lead you in your speaking and in your acting, whatever. I love that. If you heed the command, if, if, to, 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 if, <laughs> neon, 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 neon. If there is an if, we got to read, you know. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and are watchful to them. That's what I'm talking about, being watchful. We can't know. What happens is the disciples in the Gethsemane of Garden, when they came after Jesus, they fell asleep. Spiritual forces came and make them sleep. But these are the blessings, great blessings, right? Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, everything I read from today. And uh, just, you know, which one of these spoke to you? Take it, memorize the scripture, just say it. I am the head, not the tail. I'm above, I'm not beneath. I'm above only, not me. It says only, only. <laughs> Only you are under my feet. I'm above only. <laughs> That's how we got to act inside toward our circumstances that are coming against us. I'm above only. A tail is something that you sit on, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Please don't sit on me, you yeah. know. Oh, where are the head? Where are the head? Because Christ is within us. Christ is within us. Was it useful? Yeah. Mm. Can you use it? Mm. So, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to move inside of them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We listen to you, Lord. We we'll listen to what you want, Lord. We we'll listen to what you want, Lord. We we'll listen to what you want, Lord. Let us hear what you want, Lord. Shakonun darabasi kedi umbum. Thank you, Father. Wonderful Father. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for everything you've bestowed upon our lives, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. And just if you don't know Jesus, just repeat after me. Lord God, just repeat after me. Lord God, I take you as my Savior to lead and to guide me in every ways of my life, Lord. You are my master. You are my teacher. You are my helper. You are my counselor. You are my advocate. You are my everything, God. I give my life to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me right now. Fill me afresh. Fill me anew. Thank you for making me a new creation. Thank you for giving me a new heart. A heart of flesh. And not of stone. Thank you, Lord, for this great life that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, that we can walk together. Thank you, Lord, that we can walk together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father.